leading the action in Dr. Hyde Park was Marty Morrissey. Alan Dillon. Andy Moran with the layoff. Back to Dillon again. An experienced member of this male team. Jason Doherty lays it up. Jinking inside, hopping the ball nicely. Barley has gone back inside again. This Doherty, it's on the uh, ground, gives it back. Farris, Kevin McLaughlin, Danny Geraghty finally steadies the ship, and that is over the bar. Kevin McLaughlin. Leo Farris, Andy Moore, and right man, right place. Well, if we look at the replay again, the layoff from Killian O'Connor in the judgment of the referee was an illegal pass. So Andy Bourne's goal is disallowed. Two goals and six points against Galway. And again, you get the excitement when Kelly has it. They love the gooch in Kerry, but they love David Kelly in Sligo because he is their gooch. Nice ball over first, Paul McGovern. Adrian Marin is waiting for it because Marin has that right boot that registered two goals and six points against Galway, six points against New York, and this is his first in the Connacht final. There's nobody over at the far side. And that was the intention. Nice layoff by Jason Dardy. There's a chance. And again, wonderful defending by Sligo. Wonderful block down by Johnny Martin. Kevin McLaughlin. There is no doubt about it that Sligo are leading a charm life in this first half. Mayo have the potential, the creativity to break down this Sligo defence with ease. But they're not always taking their chances, unlike on this occasion. Vaughan laid it off. The finish, excellent. Breaking ball goes back for as Lee Keegan. Morn goes long to another board. Andy Morn. Castlebar Mitchells to Balahar Durain. And the Morn factor is crucial. One point between the teams. Great catch by Barry Morn. It was he that kicked it in to Andy, his captain, and the Morns get a little bit closer for their county. Passes there, the chance has arrived. Punch down, suits Kevin McLaughlin. Running at the Sligo defence, lays it off sweetly to Barry Morn, and Morn shows the way. Great atmosphere now. Mark Branning passing the Mayo 45. Looks around, decides the best option. David May with the 45. Hits it well. And it's over the bar. Alan Costello. David May and Donald Vaughan. May was fouling. Free to Donald Vaughan and to Mayo. And Eamon O'Hara has been in the wars. Rory Hickey is the linesman from Ennis, from the Aero Club. A yellow card for both of them. Kick out into the middle. This time gathered by David May, who's come to life in the second half. The referee's whistle is blown, and he said that that is a throw ball. Was this a throw? Difficult to see from that angle. Meanwhile, there's a chance here. Shoshay takes a shot off the left boot and over the bar. 
Good score by Aidan O'Shea. Ball is spread over towards Andy Moore. Little slip from Johnny Mark, viewed, I'm sure, by the referee as accidental. Aidan O'Shea flicks the ball forward. There's a chance here. Hits it brilliantly. Is it there? Yes, it is. Andy Moore and Aidan O'Shea, Colum Boy. Three quality footballers. The substitutions make a difference. Possession now is crucial. Aidan O'Shea, so difficult. Was that a throw ball? Sligo players protest. Doesn't matter a hoot to Lee Keegan, he's going forward. What about the finish? It's over the bar! Saw the space, survived the tackle, and hit it beautifully. Referee, is he going to give a free? No, Brainy still goes forward. Is there a free? Ball comes loose, and the referee blows the full-time whistle. It is Mayo's title. Heartbreak for Sligo, but it took a lot of passion. It is title. Full-time score, Mayo 12 points, Sligo 10. You know, we, we haven't played a competitive game in a long time, and maybe some of the Russians early on show that. But uh, we kept at it. We kept at it. We made a huge amount of mistakes. Uh, we kept plugging away and had confidence in ourselves. And, you know, brought on a few subs towards the end. Everyone pulled together, and, and we got over the line. The game was in the melting pot of the likes of maybe David May came out and won a very good ball there and was pulled for a, a, hand, a hand pass, which was a throw. Now, maybe it was, I don't know. Yeah. It was frustrating at the time, but it was a, it was a huge um, call for us, as far as I, I'm concerned. But I must analyse that again. I didn't think it looked any much worse than what four or five passes were after that, but look, that's, that's life, it's unfortunate, we have to take and move on. Considering the media hype and the way Mayo were in the eye of the storm unwittingly during the week, I'm sure you're happy to have the Connacht title and that case shot. Yeah, uh, it was bizarre to, to, to say the least, but thankfully it didn't affect the team in any way. You know, it was one of the best weeks training that we've had. There was a lot of happy guys and it was a happy camp. And, uh, you know, you saw some of that there today, the way they pulled together, and it was a real team win today. You know, no one really stood out or no, no one shone, but, but uh, we had guys that came off the bench and were delighted to get a chance to do a job. So, look, that's, we're, we're delighted with that. Were you surprised when Conor Martin were going public during the week? Did that upset you? Didn't upset me. Could have done without a jab, but it, it, it's it's to me it's too crazy to believe. But uh, look at it, it. It doesn't make any difference now. Uh, we have a Connick title in the in the bag, and we're looking to move on. That's a reasonable response to the week he had. Yeah, I think so, Des. It was obviously a difficult week from I think Conor Mortar and his timing uh, of his retirement to pull out of the panel was. I think he looked back and he probably regret it. I think every every footballer eventually comes to a time in their career where they're left on the bench, and you know there's 29 yeah. lads in that squad that have put a huge effort in since January, and he let them down yeah. this week. This you, was a this you know, was a reaction of it. You get on with it. You this know? is like the reaction of a young lad not getting a bar of chocolate and he went in a sulk. He didn't mm. get on the team. He sulked. No, no one player, and not certainly not Conor Mortimer, is great in the team. And uh, I felt that he was ill-advised in, in, in leaving the panel. I felt that the statement from the panel was very, uh, from his family, was very ill-judged and a bit stupid and silly, to be quite honest with you. Now, did he deserve a place? I think on the farm I saw him playing during the league, he probably did. But look, James Horton knows more, knows what's happening in training, and you pick the team based on, on, on what's happening in training. So I think, you know, in a way, there's always... When there's disunity and little splits like that in the camp, it creates even greater unity. And you saw that today. Mayo mm. fought for one another, fought as a team. Nobody, nobody can deny what he's contributed to Mayo yes, football. No, 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 he, no. he has been one of their, their top quality forwards. But you know, I thought the statement during the week was, was cringeworthy to a certain degree. And you can talk about scoring eight points in the league, etc., etc., etc. But it takes 15 players yeah. in the field yeah, to get those scores. Yeah, but in, in fairness, sometimes. People get approached to to speak and they get asked by media and maybe that was. Uh, look, he's, he's yeah. not a young he's not a yeah. young lad. He's long enough on the road. You know, he's been an excellent servant for for Mayo football. He owes nothing to Mayo football, but blasted, he would have a major contribution to make before the championship was out. And I think yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll he probably regret would have it. came on today. Yeah, Mayo course. needed probably needed in the him. second half. They brought on Michael Conroy and he yeah. probably would have been. And and every manager has a philosophy. And you know whether he doesn't fit the James Horan's philosophy, but he might see him as an impact sub. He might see him when the game opens up that he can come in and get scores. And you have to be prepared to buy into that. Okay. Well, that aside, let's talk about the game then. You you didn't enjoy the game. <coughs> well, it, twenty-three or four thousand was a great crowd. It was a great atmosphere. Mm. And it was enthralling and it was entertaining in, in in certain spells. But it it was a poor poor game of football. It genuinely was. You a felt poor it was game. too negative. I felt it was. I mean, it was two teams who who carried out the philosophy of their managers, and the philosophy was negative safety first, you know, defensive minded, putting the bodies back behind the ball, hand passing the ball mm. to it. It was all about stopping. It was all about defensive. 
and there was no plan B, attacking plan. I mean, you look at the scoring <laughs> today, Diz, uh, two forwards scored for Mayo, they got three pints between them. Uh, Sligo's forwards got three points from play. I mean, that's six points from yeah. play from, from, what is it, 15 or 16 I understand, but, but just briefly on that, and you say plan B, last week when Clare didn't do that against mm -hmm. Cork and they went man-to-man, -man, you kind of said they were aegis, which was ha very yes, harsh. Yes, but, but at the end of the day, it is. The bottom line is, the bottom line is, at the end of the day, it's great to have... You look at the team management. Team managements now are filled with... Uh, Strength and conditioning guys, fitness coaches, uh, psychologists, performance coaches, defence coaches, defence coordinators. There's no uh, attack coach. The, and at the end of the day, the bottom line is team, games are still won by the team who can outscore the opposition. And in the, both okay. instances today, neither team had a plan to outscore the opposition. Bottom line, looks like had a strong wind in the first half. And they, they did more hand passing in the first half with the wind than in the second yeah, half. Right. That's kamikaze stuff, this. Okay. There were a couple of big talking points and controversial points, Kieran. Goal and a, a disallowed goal and a disputed point. Yeah, and, and they were both crucial. They came yeah. at important stages of the game. The goal in the first half and the point, particularly in the second yeah. half. You know, and it was hand passing an issue twice. So. Well, take us through it. In terms of obviously the, the, the hand pass was the, was, was the goal in the first half. Uh, but you know, the, the rules are obviously, they changed the rules last year. We had a lot of debate a couple yeah. of years ago. Yeah. You can now pass with the open hand as, a lot as, as long as it's an underhand yeah. strike intent yeah. or and with the fist. the issue was Killian O'Connor's pass to Andy Morton. Was yeah. it legal or, or illegal? Legal. Was it an open hand underarm strike? Okay. And let's, let's have a look, look at it. I, I, think it's, I think it's a bit harsh. I, think, I don't think referees are. are making these calls on a consistent basis. I think the yeah. ball goes in, there is an un, there is, he does hand pass the ball. Like for the referee, if you look at the referee he had here, a good view. the referee indicates that he throws the ball. And that's, what did the referee actually call it as a throw or as a hand pass? Personally, I think it's a harsh call. I think, I, I, you know... I would, I, I would disagree with you. But, but Pat, I think there's referees sitting at home tonight, all the referees. I, I, I rest assured that 80% of them or 90% wouldn't and, have made and that this call And this was the more controversial point in my instance. Cullen Boyle's point, at, the teams were tied at 9-all. Nine, nine was mm -hmm. this over the bar or under the bar? And if you look very, very yeah. closely, the ball is right above the post. So, to score a point, the ball must go between the two posts. Did the ball, did that kick, did that ball go between the two and posts? No, it didn't. And it was very, very crucial because, all, remember, yeah, yeah. it was 9 all at the time. But it meant then, Mayo okay. put on another score, Sligo were two points behind, and then for the last couple of minutes, Sligo had to get a goal, where instead of having to get a goal, they should have been looking for an equalising point because that should have right. been disallowed. Mm -hmm. Do you think it was a point? I think it was just marginally wide, I think, you okay. know, I don't think it was a point, it was swings and roundabouts from Mayo perspective, right. you know, they didn't get the goal. But briefly on the, the hand point, passing, sorry, crucial, crucial briefly on the hand passing, I think the referee got it right, but the problem about it is there's an a la carte interpretation by referees to hand passing. There was at least ten, ten worse instances of, of illegal hand passes that were never that, pulled That's up. my point, and within that's, the context of the rules, but he was right, right, but there. that's not yeah. being done on a consistent yeah. basis by referees, and, and a different referee would make a different call, and, okay. and, and, and that's it's That's frustrating crucial. for yeah. players. All right then. Well, it's time now to reflect on that. A hectic schedule.